So today we're going to see how to implement a web block that can be reused on any uh, screen that searches for a domain and project and uh, allow the user to search for a particular domain and search uh, for projects within that domain by name or just go ahead and, and scroll through the projects and select one of the projects. So right now I have the web block that's open here and does all that functionality. Um, I have my drop down with domain. I have my search by project name, which allows to find a project and any projects meeting that criteria would come into this list of projects. Um, if we don't, if they don't put anything in, then all the projects for that domain are displayed in this area here. This has a uh, pagination, uh, 10 rows are allowed to be displayed per page and the user can then page through or jump to different pages. We don't have enough projects right now to look at pagination um, but, and uh, how to do that is actually a topic for another video. It would be too much content for this. Okay, so um, you can see the it accepts domain defined, a project ID, and builds its own little domain list um, and has a, a text type that is project name contains, which is bound to this control. Uh, our preparation um, fills the domain list and fills the list of projects within that domain. Uh, if we click on find project, it takes us to find project, which filters the list of projects uh, and refreshes the screen with just that list. Now you'll see this on notify uh, list navigation. That's what allows the um, the navigation between uh, in the list here. Uh, and then on select domain change, which uh, fills this again with different uh, projects based on the domain that they've selected. They also We also have select project, which is bound to our select button. And that select project is actually how we connect to the calling um, page. So all this does is uh, notify. Notice that this says deprecated. This function has been deprecated. Um, but it's actually the only way the new function that's replacing it doesn't allow us to pass anything back. So um, the tech support solution is just to use the um, deprecated actions to pass back and forth. So the message that I'm passing is the uh, identifier of the project that the, the person has selected. So notice we converted a couple of times here because this project ID is a um, project ID data type. Uh, and OutSystems, or OutSystems doesn't realize that you could go directly from an integer to text by integer to text. So you have to do identifier to integer and then integer to text to be able to pass this message because this message type is text. So you have to pass text back. Okay, um, so going on to our demo page, um, notice this page doesn't have a lot going on in it because no, there's nothing else on the page except for the web block. So the only action that's here is on notify project selected because that's what action I've chosen to call um, this particular return variable or return action. I have one other variable, which is project found, uh, initially set to false because we don't have a project. And if we look at our web block and the container surrounding it, notice that the display is set to display if project found is false. So our default value of project found is false. And when we come back, we execute this notify project selected which sets project found to true and refreshes that web block, which then hides it. Okay, um, so what happens then on this demo page when we actually run it is we've got a demo of it. We see our web block with the domains. We have our projects here. If we change the domain, it changes the projects um, and it allows to search by uh, 
project name or part of project name. So I can search for anything, find the project and see now I only have the main domains uh, with, the, with the string of DOM in it. If I click on one of them to select it, notice it just goes away because we've set that container property to display um, only if the project has not been selected. Okay, so this one doesn't really do very much. It just shows you how to implement it. If we actually look at it implemented, we have the project overview that does the same thing. And when we come back with a selected project here, we do the same thing to set the uh, project found equal to true, um, refreshes the web block and says, okay, I want to not display this anymore. Here's our deprecated get message. It's that's what actually retrieves the message from the call, uh, the called web block. And then uh, we set our project ID here, uh, text to integer and integer to identifier. So now we have a project ID and now I can refresh my data source with the uh, filter of projects.projectID equals our project ID. Okay, so if we actually look at this screen, it does the same thing. Again, we don't have a lot happening here because I haven't done anything with the um, project ID coming back, but it's, I know that it's coming back with the right value and I'll be able to fill in whatever actions I want to on this screen below. So uh, it's recommended that we use this so that we have a consistency in the search. I'm gonna go back in the other screens that um, do similar functions and, and allow it to uh, be returned in the web block uh, of the project being selected. So that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.